Welcome to all of you who are joining us for this live stream service on the day of Pentecost at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Alleluia! Christ is risen! The Lord is risen indeed! Alleluia! God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. 
and your sons and daughters, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and smoky mist. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response is Psalm 104, verses 25 to 35 and 37. We will read it in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You, you give it to them, they gather it. You open their hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit, and they were created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and the temples. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Hallelujah. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. No one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the, by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are activated by the one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the and all the members of the body, though many, are one body. So it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews are Greeks, slaves are free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Pentecost. Yes, I hope you all are at home wearing red. I reminded you last week that you need to be wearing red today. We are red today because of this glorious celebration. Pente, meaning five, refers to the 50 days post-resurrection. So let's review the timeline. We have Jesus' death, three days his resurrection, then 40 days later, his ascension, and now today, on the 50th day, we have the coming of Pentecost. Well, the disciples didn't have this timeline. They were gathered in Jerusalem, and they were trying to figure out what the next step was. What is this thing that Jesus is sending them? What is the advocate? He will not leave us orphaned or comfortless, but just what is it all about? You see, they didn't have the timeline that we have. They didn't know that it would only be 10 days. Unsure, alone, and bewildered. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? I suspect a lot of us are bewildered, wondering, unsure, and some of us are alone. It's a time of uncertainty, not just for the disciples then, but for us now. Pentecost represents the breaking in of God's purpose for all humanity. That humanity bringing together in understanding despite our differences. God created us. Our highest purpose is to trust our Creator. And that trust is restored in our Savior Jesus Christ. So suddenly the entire Christian community, which in Jerusalem at that time would have been about 120 people, were gathered. And suddenly they heard a rush of wind and the tongues of fire dancing on the tops of their heads and they began to speak in tongues. Out here in, in the desert, we see whirlwinds, and I imagine if you were close to one, it would make some sort of a sound. If nothing else, it would make the sound of the sand clashing onto whatever was next to it. 
Some of us come from places where there's other kinds of winds that are circular, be they tornadoes or hurricanes, and they certainly have a distinct sound of their own. If you've ever heard a tornado, I guarantee you, you remember what it sounded like. So this rush of wind was strange and different to the disciples. It wasn't like any wind they had ever heard before. And they began speaking in tongues. The theological word for speaking in tongues is glossolalia. When I was in sixth grade, I wrote a paper on glossolalia because there were several people in my family, my extended family, that were Pentecostal and I did not understand what was going on. I wrote the paper and I still didn't understand what was going on. I sure do wish I had that paper today. Today for me is just as mysterious as it was back then. They begin speaking in a variety of languages. Theologically, this time in scripture and in biblical history is essentially the reversal of the Tower of Babel. You remember in the Old Testament when they were building this gigantic tower so they could see out, so they could reach into the heavens and be closer to God and see out over everything that they owned. God said, you're getting a little too big for your britches. So I am going to confound your language so that you will not be able as easily to speak to one another. Well, today we understand that it works just the opposite in our message at Pentecost. I believe there are two great messages in our Pentecost readings. Number one is about language, and that is the language of the gospel is understandable and available for everyone. Secondly, the disciples finally understood, perhaps for the first time, what it was that Jesus was telling them to do and they began to understand, to put all the pieces together in understanding what it was that Jesus had said to them when he was here. Don't you wish you had that gift, that gift of the coming of the Holy Spirit that totally opened you up and gave you a complete understanding of what Jesus was meaning in all of his actions and words? These two messages are inextricably tied together. Remember, the, God, the, the disciples were just plain fishermen. They had no formal education. They didn't comprehend the nuances of Greek rhetoric. They were, however, malleable. And Jesus molded them into the people that he needed them to be. Jesus promised he would not leave them comfortless or orphaned. He would send them the advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of truth to guide them. How do you imagine the Godhead? We'll talk more about that next week, but begin thinking about how you actually imagine the Godhead, the Trinity. God the Father, we understand, is a role of creator. God the Son, we understand, in a role of Redeemer. We know this because Jesus came and became one of us so that he was able to communicate with us and we are able to understand this second person of the Trinity a little better. God the Holy Spirit. What is she like? Yes, I know, everybody kind of chuckles when I call the Holy Spirit she, but that's the way I understand it. I believe that the Godhead is both male and female, and represented in the Trinity, the Holy Spirit is that spirit of truth. And she is the one that comes to us and guides us. Some of what we have was given to us from our parents. I don't know about you, but I still have the little thing of the little person sitting here and the little person sitting here, both of them whispering in my ear, one saying, yes, yes, that's exactly right, do that, and the other one said, nah, go on and go the other way. Well, that spirit of truth is what is deep inside us. It's that spirit of conscience, holy conscience, 
to guide us to do the right things. You see, it's through the Holy Spirit, I believe, that we understand the truth of life. It is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that not only whispers to us, but also informs us, gives us insight. Just like the disciples, we too need to understand the depth and the richness of all of Jesus' teachings and miracles. It's at the core of the gospel message, the good news of everlasting life through the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ our Lord. On that day of Pentecost, the disciples were given a bountiful gift of understanding. Suddenly, it all became clear. All the metaphors, the miracles, the words, the healings, the actions, and finally the implications and the mysteries of our Lord became clear to the disciples. They had a depth of learning that years and years and years of seminary can't teach us. You see, Jesus had a plan for them, and a plan that included sending them out to the four corners of the earth to spread the gospel message. Four things he would have them do. First, to believe in him and trust in him. Secondly, to understand the atoning sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Thirdly, to live a life of compassion and love, accepting God's grace, accepting God's grace freely given. And fourth, telling others. It is through and because of this understanding that we are challenged to live a life of compassion, spreading God's love and building up God's kingdom, that Pentecost is alive and growing in us today. That's the message. That's where we are as Christians. That's what we have to do. I read in one of my commentaries, and I love this comment, so I thought I'd share it with you. She said, I need to be filled by the Holy Spirit regularly because I have a leak. I love that, don't you? I can identify with that. I think I have a leak, too. It's through our common worship, our common life together, whether we share the Eucharistic feast physically or spiritually, that we come together and we are filled up. Yes, this is your filling station. And yes, we all have a leak. I like to think of that leak, too, as being a way of spreading God's love, not losing motivation. But I suppose it's both. In any case, we all need to be filled up. And this is our time, our special time with God, for that filling. Remember, the gospel message is available and understandable for everyone. And we have to be the disciples of God taking the, this message out into the world. This gospel is available to everyone, and we must carry it forth to the four corners of the earth, just as in the Jerusalem cross that has four other crosses in the center of it, representing the gospel going to the four corners of the earth. We, too, must carry the gospel forth. I'm sure you remember and have heard many times in many sermons the statement that's attributed to St. Francis. Speak the gospel always. Use words if you must. That's our challenge today, is to speak the gospel. To go out from our place, wherever it is, from your home, from your cabin, from the lakeside, wherever you happen to be, to go forth and proclaim the gospel using words when you have to. I don't know about you, but I think I have a leak. Do you? Come and be filled. Amen.
Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. For those with prayer books, it is on page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. light. True God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified in the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people are form two for those of you with prayer books, as it starts on page 385. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of Him. Pray that they be found and be found by Him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for all who have died. I ask your prayers for all of those who have died from the COVID-19 and for all of their families. We also pray for all people who work in the healthcare industry and have given so much of their time and their families have given so much. We pray for everyone who has worked during this, this time and everyone who has suffered. Father, we ask you to um, heal and to bring peace. This is a prayer from the presiding bishop. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle us, your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, bake bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission, that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and most merciful God, grant that by the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, we may be enlightened and strengthened for your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, dear people of St. Andrews and all of you who are joining us from various parts of the country and of the world. We're so happy to have this huge community linked together virtually. A few announcements. We do continue all kinds of services during the week. Every night at 7 o'clock, Compline will be done by one of several people. If you're interested in, in being a part of that ministry, please let me know. I'd like to have a different person for each of the seven days of the week. So pray about that and be in touch. It's really pretty easy to do, and it's a great way to end the evening. Sundays, of course, we will continue live streaming at 10 o'clock here from Your Nave and St. Andrews in Las Cruces. On Thursdays, we will do a live stream of morning prayer done at noonday with the saint of the day. This week, we'll be talking about the visitation between Elizabeth and the Virgin Mary. So please come and be a part of services. There are Bible studies. There are all kinds of things going on. Please look at our Facebook page and our website, and you will see what's happening here at St. Andrews. God be with you in this time. We are looking to move into a different phase, phase 2A. I suspect we'll get all the way through Z by the time we go through all the steps we need to for phase 2. We're beginning to talk about what we might do to open up minimally and what that might be. And if we decide to do that, we will let you know. This will be a decision made by the vestry in concert with your bishop so that we are sure to make our house of God a safe place for all people at all times. That's our goal. God be with you, my friends. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Of God 
Take him in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Please join us, those of you who are worshiping from home, in this prayer for receiving spiritual communion. Let us pray. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live and die in your love. Amen. The prayer after communion is found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Set us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
in peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia.